Lesson 10.9, we're going to solve word problems about liquid volume and mass. And it's very important that you have seen the previous lesson so you won't become lost or confused. In video 10.7, we learned about liquid volume and liters. And in 10.8, we learned about mass and grams and kilograms. And they're linked in the video's description if you haven't seen them. We can use models to solve liquid volume and mass problems. We can draw a bar model to show the information, write an equation, then solve the equation. And we can draw a picture to help us understand the problem. We can use a pan balance and gram masses. We place an object in one pan and gram units in the other pan until the beam is level. That's the beam. We have some gram masses here. We have it in 100 grams, 50 grams, 20, 10, 5, 2, and 1. We just place little gram masses on one pan until the beam is level and we'll know how many grams the item in the other pan is. For solving word problems, one, we need to understand the problem. Two, we need to identify important information Three, we choose a strategy and operation sign. We write our equation. Four, we solve the problem. And five, we make sure our answer makes sense. We check our answer. Mr. Lee has a large container that can hold six liters. He will fill the large container with the lemonade in these pitchers. Will Mr. Lee have lemonade left over after filling the large container? So imagine off on the side, he's got this large container that can hold six liters, this imaginary one. We'll imagine it's like over here. And he wants to use these pitchers of lemonade to fill that six liter large container. So will Mr. Lee have lemonade left over after filling the large container? We take a look at the pitchers here. Let's take a closer look. We look at the measures on the pitchers. So this is liters. And we come down and see there's two liters of lemonade in this pitcher. The lemonade goes up to that mark for the two, that's two liters. And it's the same for this pitcher. So we have two liters and two liters. Since there are two equal groups of two liters, we can multiply. The L, remember, is the abbreviation for liter. So we have two pitchers times two liters. That's equal to four liters. We can also add 2 plus 2 to equal 4 liters. Mr. Lee's large container can hold 6 liters. The two pitchers hold a total of 4 liters. Circle the correct words to complete the sentences. 4 liters is greater than or less than 6 liters. Is 4 liters greater than or less than 6 liters? Well, 4 is less than 6, so 4 liters is less than 6 liters. Mr. Lee will or will not have lemonade left over? If you said will not, you're right. He will not have lemonade left over. His large container holds 6 liters, but he only filled it with 4, so there's not any lemonade left over. He still has room to pour more in there. He didn't have enough. Lou's fish tank contains 20 liters of water. He empties it with a bucket that can hold four liters of water. How many times will Lou have to fill the bucket? How many times will Lou have to fill this bucket to empty the fish tank of all 20 liters? We can use a bar model to solve this. We know the whole fish tank contains 20 liters, and we can make a bar model showing that a group that has 4 liters, we split it into 5. 20 divided by 4 liters, 20 liters divided by 4 liters is equal to 5. So that would be 5 buckets. Lou will have to fill the bucket 5 times. We see in our bar model, we have five parts with four liters in each part. 
When we can check our math, we know the inverse operation, the opposite operation of division is multiplication, so we can do 5 times 4 is equal to 20, and that's correct, so we know we have it right. Sophia has a marker and a 10 gram mass on one side of a balance. She placed gram masses on the other side until the pan balance was balanced, so the beam was level. What is the mass of the marker? Well, we can see there's a marker and a 10 gram, and on this side we have a 10 gram, a 5 gram, a 2 gram, another 2 gram, a 1 gram, and a 1 gram. She can remove a 10 gram mass from each side. Both sides have a 10 gram mass, so we can take a 10 gram mass away from each side. Then she can total the grams in the yellow tray to find the mass of the marker. By taking away an equal mass from each side, the pan will still stay balanced. We can add the 5 plus 2 is 7, and 2 is 8, 9, 10, 11. We can write an equation for this problem. She had a 10 gram mass in the marker on this side before we took it away, and we had 10 and 5 is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 grams on this side. When we took this 10 gram mass out of the yellow tray, we did 21 minus 10. That's equal to 11. We know 11 grams is the marker's mass, and we can check our math. We can do 11 plus 10 is equal to 21, because addition is the inverse operation, the opposite of subtraction. By taking away an equal amount from both trays, and the pan was still balanced, we knew the mass for the marker. A can of carrots has a mass of 411 grams. A can of peas has a mass of 425 grams. What is the total mass for both cans? Using a bar model, we can put 411 grams on one side, 425 grams on the other side, and we know whatever that total is, is going to be the total mass for both cans. The word total tells us to add. We add 411 grams plus 425 grams, and we get 836 grams. We know the total is 836 grams. We can check our math by, we take the difference, the 836, and we subtract the subtrahend, the 425, and it's equal to the minuend, 411. We know that we did our math correctly. We can use clue words to choose the correct operation sign. For addition, we might see words in a word problem like total, added to, in all, altogether, or sum. For a subtraction word problem, we might see the words how many more, how much less, difference, fewer, or less. For a multiplication word problem, we might see in each or times, and division, to divide, we might see the word each or split into. We also might see divided by. Now, this is third grade math. As you get into higher math grades, you're going to find more clue words for these operations. But in most thir third grade textbooks, you're going to see these clue words. Tala has three containers, each filled with six liters of water. Bob has three containers, each filled with eight liters of water. What is the total liquid volume of their containers? So first we need to find Tala's total liquid volume. She has three containers, each filled with six liters of water. We can draw a picture to help us solve this. Tala has three containers, so we can make three shapes and put a six in each one, because they each have six liters, and we can see that it's 18. We can also do 3 times the 6 liters, which is equal to 18. Then we find Bob's total liquid volume. He has 3 containers, each filled with 8 liters of water. So here we have 3 containers that each have 8, and that's equal to 24. 
we can do 3 times 8 liters is equal to 24 liters. It wants to know what is the total liquid volume of their containers, so we need to add 18 plus 24, and we find that the total volume of their containers is 42 liters. There were several steps to this problem. First, we had to multiply to find Tala's liters. Then we had to multiply to find Bob's liters. Then we need to use addition to find the total liquid volume. A small cookie contains two grams of sugar. A large cookie contains three grams of sugar. Will 20 grams of sugar be enough to make four small cookies and four large cookies? We can draw pictures. We can make four small circles and put a two in each one for the two grams in four small cookies. That's eight grams. We can make four larger circles for the four larger cookies and put a three for the three grams in each one. And see, that's a 12. We can multiply two grams times the four small cookies and get eight grams. Then we can multiply the three times the four large cookies and get 12 grams. Now we add the 8 and the 12 together, and it's equal to 20. They wanted to know, will 20 grams of sugar be enough to make four small cookies and four large cookies? And yes, it will be enough sugar. We had several steps to solve this problem. First, we multiplied to find the amount of grams in four small cookies. Then we multiplied to find the amount of grams in four large cookies. Then we added the grams together to get a total and we found that it was 20 and it was enough. Sarah will pour water into pitcher B until it has two more liters than pitcher A. So how many liters of water will she pour into pitcher B? So first, we need to see how many liters are in each pitcher. Let's take a closer look. We can see that pitcher A has five liters, and pitcher B has three liters. Understanding the problem, we know she's going to pour water into pitcher B until it has two more liters than pitcher A. Well, if pitcher A has five liters, then, and we need to have two more than that, that would be seven liters. Pitcher B is going to need to have a total of seven liters. Right now, it only has three liters. We can subtract the liquid volume of pitcher B from the seven liters, and that's a difference of four liters. So we know Sarah will pour four liters into pitcher B. It's got three in it now. If we pour four liters into it, or Sarah pours it in, she will then have seven liters in pitcher B, and that will be two more than the five that are in pitcher A right now. See? We used addition then subtraction to solve this problem. A nickel is worth five cents, and each nickel has the mass of five grams. Emma has 20 nickels in her purse. What is the mass of the nickels in Emma's purse? So we need to find the mass of 20 nickels. There are five grams each. We can multiply the number of nickels by their grams. We have 20 nickels, times 5 grams. That's equal to 100 grams of nickels in Emma's purse. We multiplied to find the answer. We can multiply or we can add 5 twenties to solve or to check this problem. We put 5 twenties, we add them up, and we get 100 grams. Now, there was some unnecessary information in this word problem. Do you see it? We don't need to know that a nickel is worth five cents to solve this problem. That was unnecessary or unneeded information. Sometimes word problems will have unnecessary information that we need to ignore to solve the problem. So remember when you're solving word problems to make sure you understand what you're looking for and that your answer makes sense. And remember that you can use clue words to help you choose the correct operation sign. This is the end of chapter 10. Our next lesson is going to be starting chapter 11, 
all about perimeter and area. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.